Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, I'm filming this intro actually after I already went into surgery. Today's like day seven or eight, I think. Um, I just, this whole journey has been kind of like very spread out since coronavirus hit and quarantine and rescheduling of appointments. So I just never got around to filming an intro before now. So, um, which was actually better because it gave me a chance to kind of like look through my footage and see what we needed to touch on. But um, I'm in San Diego right now and I actually brought Leonidas with me because I thought he would be a great little companion to help recover uh, when he's not stomping on my chest. That is, <laughs> if you have been following kind of like this journey about uh, what I'm getting done, etc., in my original video right here, which I will link in the description box for you, then you kind of, well, it looks like I have like a halo because my ring light in the mirror. Then you kind of have an idea already, but if this is the first video you're watching, that's okay too. Basically what I am having done in this video is a breast augmentation and a little bit of liposuction under the chin oh it's still kind of numb it's weird and then a bit of liposuction in the armpit area like you know when you wear the tube tops and you've got that little fat overhang right there my doctor recommended that we do that when she kind of took a look at me and I did my consultation so um, I kind of wanted to go over just the process of everything and how I'm doing so far so many of you are so sweet I see you on my finsta and on my regular Instagram being like how are you um, I cannot answer all of your DMs, but thank you so much for asking and caring. So that is something I'm super grateful for. So thank you for that. And I know some of you are actually going through the healing process right now, right along with me. So that's pretty awesome. So I wanted to talk about the size I um, am doing and the cost, where I had my incision site, because I know people are like having, I don't know if you can still get it through the armpits, but there's ha has been in the past armpit um, entry, belly button, under the boobs. So I was thinking about doing 360 cc's and the day before my surgery, I talked to the doc, or the day of my surgery when I was waiting to go to the operating room, which you'll see clips of in a little bit, I decided to go 380 because I talked to the doctor and she was like, if you're on the fence about it, I say go 380. So listening to a lot of your comments, you're like, I wish I had gone a little bit bigger than I did. I went ahead with 380 cc's and I started off being a full B cup. So the 380 is added onto the B cup and supposedly I should be around like a small D or a large C at the end of this, but no one really knows until everything heals and everyone's body is a little bit different. So that's kind of one of the factors that you have to think about. Cause I would, I was asking like, okay, so if I do 380, like what is my cup size going to be? There's no straight answer for that. And you can kind of do a little bit of research online and you just, you just don't know until you're all healed up. Um, I kind of started this journey going to, I kind of talked a lot about this sort of stuff in that one video that I'm going to link you in the description box below. So I'll kind of go over it quickly, but, um, I started my journey. I had one consultation. Um, I liked the doctor. All right, but I preferred to go with someone else that I connected with a little bit more. So I scheduled my original consult or my second consultation with, um, a doctor in La Jolla. And after my consultation, I absolutely loved him, but I ended up looking at the work of his and the woman that I went to, Dr. Saltz. And I ended up looking at a gallery picture because they work at the same place of all their work. And I, everyone I kept looking at, I'm like, oh, I really like that one was Dr. Saltz. So I ended up making my appointment with her and my original appointment with Dr. Brahmi was supposed to be on March 7th or 6th. Then coronavirus hit, and so I had to like push my appointment with Dr. Saltz way out to just recently, as you know. So um, I went over the size, the cost, I paid $9,200 for the chin lipo, the armpit, and then the breast augmentation. So still, you can tell my boobs are looking kind of awkward. They're like all the way up here. They almost look like pecs. So I'll kind of go over my thoughts about how they're healing currently in the video, but um, apparently it's just kind of part of the process. Uh, so what you do is you go into your consultation and you will meet the doctor and you will 
be prepared to put on like a sports bra or something like that because they will usually put um, sizers in here and they will take measurements of your chest from like your clavicles to your nipples to your nipples to here and all these different measurements that you have no idea what it's for. They do. So they take all those measurements and they kind of go over the different size breast implants and there's three different types. There's like moderate profile and that's how much they like come up off your chest. There's like wider, if you have kind of a wider chest. I did um, the moderate profile and I also did textured implants. Dr. Saltz has such a great natural touch and so I really trusted her advice because every single doctor you talk to is gonna have a completely different opinion and put ideas in your head about, oh no, you shouldn't do textured because of this. Oh, you shouldn't do under the muscle because of this. I also did under the muscle and my incision is right beneath my boobs and a lot of you have been asking, are your tattoos gonna survive? I still don't know. There's um, tape over my stitches so most likely those tattoos you're not even gonna be able to see after this. So, you know, when you go through your consultation, you're gonna kind of get a feel for the doctor, if they actually listen to you, if they don't. Um, and I think you're gonna kind of know, right, based off that. But initially before you make your consultation, you should really go based on uh, making sure they're board certified, looking up if they've been sued, if they have any lawsuits against them, and reviews. So those are really important things. And then next, it's like some people need to feel like warm and fuzzy with their doctor. I really didn't care as long as you're really good at your job. And Dr. Saltz, I actually love. She reminds me of Edna from The Incredibles. Edna mode. She is a super rad lady. She has a super dry sense of humor. She doesn't sugarcoat anything. And I appreciate that about her. So I actually really liked her. And so you're going to try on sizers, which is what I'll show you a little bit of in a minute. And... I tried on sizers and you know, it's kind of awkward because it's like, okay, this is great and you can see how much it protrudes out from the side and stuff, but it's kind of hard to tell based on that. So I kind of feel like it's almost like throwing shit at a wall to see what sticks. Like I don't know what cup size I'm going to be right now. I just have to wait and see when I'm healed and you know, so that was kind of the process. And then after your consultation, you go in for a pre-op where they take your blood. Um, they make sure you're not sick or anything. I had a coronavirus test as well that they did. And you do your pictures, your before pictures for that. So that's what I did as well. And I kind of touch on this throughout the video. And then um, at the end of the video, I'm actually gonna have a Q&A where I opened up the floor to you guys to ask me any questions that you wanted. So your question might be featured at the end of this. I think I've kind of covered everything that I wanted to go over in the intro. I just wanted to kind of give you guys a little tidbit about like what to expect if you're thinking about getting your a breast augmentation and that's kind of like the process you go through and then you come in the um, day of for your surgery and I wanted to talk a little bit about that piece actually because I found it kind of scary because you don't know that this is going to happen um, so when on the morning of your um, surgery, you'll actually be taken into the surgery room. I don't know why I'm, I can't think of the, the surgery suite basically. And it looks like most of the time a scene from Saw, like the beds laid out there. They have like the arm straps and a big lights and that's where you lay down and the anesthesiologist will ask you random questions about your life, what you do, your pets, and they'll give you an IV and before you know it, you're waking up in the recovery room and you're gonna be there for like two, one to two hours. So I just like wanted to put that out there because a lot of people I feel like don't know that because I didn't know that. I was like, why wouldn't you put someone out before you bring them into the operating room? That's what it is, operating room. So that can be a little unsettling and a little scary, but honestly, you don't wake up until it's over and the anesthesiologist watches you the entire time to make sure that you're not like randomly waking up. And I was actually concerned about that initially. And I read a lot of DMs from you guys saying that like, even if you did wake up in the middle of surgery, it would just be kind of like a little groggy, but you still wouldn't feel anything. So don't be worried about that. Um, and anesthesiologists like just sit there and monitor you the whole time. And that whole process has come a long way. There's always risks and everything, but it really has come a very very long way so let's go ahead and jump into the video and i'm going to take you through the entire process of kind of my um consultation with dr saltz through everything else and then my few days after recovery and literally in the recovery room they handed me my phone so i pulled it out and i couldn't say anything because i found it very hard to talk 
but I did get um, a beautiful clip of my face, so enjoy that. Okay, these are 300. You look very bored. <laughs> okay, so I just left. Um, the last time I made a video about getting my boobs done, I had actually decided on one specific doctor in La Jolla, and um, my friend, a friend of mine, actually had a procedure done at this office and said, well, this other doctor who's a female is actually known for doing very nat a very natural look. So I went on the website and I looked and I kind of looked at like all of the um, doctor's work and didn't like specify whose work I wanted to see in almost every um, breast augmentation that I was attracted to that looked really good. I clicked it and it was this female doctor's. So I just had my consultation with her and really, really liked her. She reminds me of Edna from uh, The Incredibles with the little bob and like the glasses. She's like, right? <laughs> Um, so I'm super glad I went with my gut and like did that because I actually would have had my breast augmentation a couple days ago if I had done it with the original doctor, um, who's still really good. Just, I just preferred her work over his. So going to be, um, going ahead and doing that. Hopefully, um, we can get in a little sooner because now my date isn't all the way until like May 7th, May 7th, May 7th or something like that. So, um, I liked her she seemed just way more particular and detail oriented when it came to like measuring. She like had a freaking um, level. So she was like taking all sorts of measurements and everything. And um, I think it was helpful to speak to a woman and have a, like a woman doctor. So pretty stoked, a little bummed I'm not gonna have. I mean, I'm on the list so if there's any cancellations or anything, I'll have my pre-op and I'll be ready to go and be able to just like go in and get it done. But um, I was hoping to have my boobs done for uh, Stagecoach. So <laughs> hopefully I can get in there sooner. But if not, I mean, that's just the price I've got to pay for going to the doctor that I want. So anyways, that's the update. Uh, off to the DMV right now to get my custom plates for Lloyd. Um, I'll have to show them to you guys. They're pretty fucking hilarious. <laughs> uh, we still have to get that sticker done. Uh, uh, I'm gonna get a sticker that says, Harry, I took care of it. And if you get it, you get it. And if you don't, then we could never be friends. So that's that. Alright, so we just went through all the paperwork and now I'm going to get my photos taken before it comes. I match this chair like so well. Look at this. It's really cute. Okay, that's only safe place for you guys to be while I drive. So, I thought I just bought a dash cam, whatever. Anyways, um, so I just finished my pre-op. I'm on my way home right now. Well, to Nick's house. It's kind of my home. It's my San Diego home right now. So the pre-op, um, I didn't want to take the camera in there when she was taking pictures because I, I was obviously topless, so... Um, didn't do that, but yeah, the pre-op's done. I actually had blood work done like a couple weeks ago. I already said this, I think. So I didn't have to do that, but we went over all the risks involved, all of that stuff, and um, I signed all that stuff, and I'm uh, $9,000 poorer now <laughs> after paying for this. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I'm stoked to have gotten that done. I got a prescription for um, Arnica, which helps with bruising. So I'm supposed to be starting that on Tuesday of this coming week. And that's like, I think that'll be like four or five days before surgery. So, um, going to get that. And I also got a prescription for Percocet. Um, I don't think I'll be taking that. I don't really want to take opiates at all. I've never taken anything like Oxycontin or any of those. Even when I got my wisdom teeth pulled, like I didn't use any of that because I just don't really, oh my gosh, I need to get my nails done. Um, I just don't really like the idea of putting that kind of stuff in my body. So 
I try and stay away from it as much as possible. Um, and uh, she said if I did some like Tylenol, I should probably be fine. Um, and then I got prescribed two other things that I don't physically have in my possession. They are calling it into my pharmacy, so I don't really remember what they're called, but they're these two like things that help like your muscle area relax here uh, so that it's not hurting or anything. So that's where we're at. Got some pictures taken. Um, so awkward to like, I don't know why I'm such a prude, but it's so awkward to like take your top off in front of like strangers, like even if they're women. I don't know why I'm so weird about that. But I was like born in a Christian household. Like the only person that's supposed to see me naked is my man. So I'm sticking by that. Anyways, I'm just bored now sitting in traffic and talking to talk, so. And I will catch up with you guys. You probably won't see me again until the surgery date, uh, which is in seven days. Pretty exciting. I am nervous, but I'm, I'm nervous because there are risks with being put under and um, I, I, it freaks me out a little bit, um, but yeah, I am perfectly healthy, so I'm gonna stick to that, <laughs> and hopefully we don't have any complications at all. Most people don't, but uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll see you guys uh, in like seven days. Hello, party people. This is day of the quarantine. <laughs> um, it's all blending together. My breast augmentation surgery has now been moved like a 17th time <laughs> to the end of May. They, could, they rescheduled for like April 14th, but honestly, I don't even know if this stuff's going to be dealt with or pass us by then. So, and I have to go back to Nashville. So, I mean, I've already been here for over a month almost. So I scheduled it for May 19th, I think. All the dates are like just smeared together in my mind. So I think, uh, yeah, I think it's May 19th and I'll be back then to do the surgery. And I'm just kind of like, I just want to have it done already. Like I've, I've vaguely remember saying this in my last video I'm just kind of irritated I just have to keep moving it I mean I understand why but with with like that out of the picture I just I want it done so um gotta wait gotta wait some more and I keep watching botch and I'm like oh my gosh I want this done already like some might think that that would make me not want to do it but I have one of the best doctors in San Diego doing it so uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked, but I just, I would just love to just get it over with and done with so I can enjoy my new tits. Thanks. I'll check in with you guys later and see if there's any new developments. Hopefully I'm not filming again until around May 19th or May 19th, the morning I go in. Good morning, folks. It is the day before my surgery. <laughs> Next time we're doing the dishes because we can't stand the dirty thing. We went to bed with a lot of dirty dishes in there. So. Oh, that's how I order my dirty martinis in Mexico. <laughs> um, so we're about to head down to the... Um, titty Center. The Titty Center. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck it's called. Um, I guess they're doing a coronavirus test. And well, we need to bring masks, by the way. Um, and then they're doing a pregnancy test and then hopefully explaining to Nick what to expect when he picks me up and all that, cause that's gonna be tomorrow morning. <gasps> so crazy, but it's so soon. I'm like smiling cause I'm nervous as fuck. <laughs> Ooh, I didn't brush my teeth this morning. Okay, wait, <laughs> now I can't cause I have a special. <laughs> I also haven't showered today. I basically sweat my ass off all night long. So that was cool. <laughs> Bless you. have to shit because I'm nervous and I've got the nervous shits now so 
How romantic is that? <laughs> He's so sweet. Last night, I was like, I asked him this morning, I was like, I don't know how much that was like the tequila talking, but um, he said that he would do whatever he needed to do to take care of me while I recover, and he even said he would wipe my ass if I needed it, and that's the moment I knew that it was truly forever. <clears throat> And then he told me he loved my two eyelash extensions that are left. I have no idea why this is so blown out. Holy shit. This camera's a little out of whack. So yeah, um, we, uh, I didn't film yesterday after my appointment because it wasn't anything too special. Um, or maybe I did, I can't fucking remember. All the days are blending together and time isn't real right now. So um, they just did a coronavirus test and they didn't give me my results and I'm still going in today and the doctor called me last night so I'm gonna guess that everything's good to go. And uh, Nick's gonna go hang out with my friend Allie while I'm in surgery. It should take about two and a half hours or so. And then <clears throat> I will be coming out and I will vlog then. So thanks for all the well wishes and texts and everything. Titty city. <laughs> I have been all drawn up here and here. I'm literally about to get taken back like any second. The operating room is right there. I am so nervous. Just like ready to like, let's fucking just do this then. <sighs> so basically Nick brought me the coolest socks ever. <laughs> I didn't even realize that these were like little converse. And this guy bruise. Okay, I'm gonna change into this and then pea sample. This thing is keeping me warm right here. Hot air. It's pretty cool. It's like just blowing up the blanket. So I got asked today if I was a jealous person. And I said, no, I'm not a jealous person. I'm a possessive person. And what's mine is mine, and don't fucking touch it. I just got back to Nick's house. He set me up here. He's so sweet. I just tried to eat a fucking goldfish and my mouth is like so dry. Like it's so disgusting and dry. This thing is really cute. It's for the liposuction under the neck. I don't know. It just doesn't stay on very well. I don't know. It reminds me of the Twilight Zone episode where they unwrap a girl face. I don't know. Maybe you know. I'm a little like out of it right now. Um so dry in my mouth. Ew. Mm. I got this like wedge pillow. I'm watching TV. I just, I don't really feel nauseous, but I'm like kind of on edge. Like I could if I move too much or something, but it doesn't hurt that bad actually. I'm surprised I'm able to hold my phone up like this. They did liposuction here too on my yeah. armpits. I feel okay. I'm not sure. I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. Hey guys, this is day two of recovery, or it's kind of day one because I was finished yesterday around 2.30, went to sleep. I use this like pillow right here to sleep on. It's kind of like a wedge pillow. A lot of you told me to get that, so I did. And um, this is feeling really sore. It's kind of itchy at the same time. Like it kind of almost like hurts so good to touch it, you know? And then my boobs look so gross, naked, I have to say. Like they look like weird little torpedoes. My nipples are kind of lower. Um, but thank goodness, one of my friends showed me a picture of her boobs the day after she got them done. They looked exactly like mine, mine do right now. And then three months later, they had actually dropped and looked more natural because there are a lot of, it's up here right now. So these look pretty gross. Um, I've got a bit of scarring under here. These are where my sutures are right there. I put some Arnica on there. I got like tacos in my mouth. Nick just made me the best tacos ever. Um, this thing makes me feel like a Teletubby. I don't know why, but the pain is worse today, but I still have not taken any of the narcotic pain pills because I'm just really not interested in going that route. So I've been taking ibuprofen. Tylenol and muscle relaxers. I actually forgot to prescribe my muscle relaxers. So 
I called in last night. I was like, hey, I have no muscle relaxers because the doctor called me and was like, make sure you take those because since my implants are under the muscle, the muscle's trying to like lay flat and so you need it to kind of relax. So Nick went and got me those, which was super sweet. And um, now I'm just sitting on the couch watching TV. I'm so fucking bloated right now. I have no idea what it's from. I don't know if it's from... The, the different combination of medicines that I'm taking or what. I haven't really been eating a whole lot, but I just, I literally look and feel like six months pregnant and it won't go away. So that's fun. Um, we'll check in with you guys tomorrow and uh, see how we're doing. Oh my gosh, I'm looking really good. Okay, so it is day three. I'm actually at the river right now. Um, I can't really do anything but sit around and drink some beer here and there. But um, Nick is off on the boat today, which is super awesome. We slept in the back of his truck last night and it was actually fine. Um, I've been just using my legs a lot to do things. Like when I sit up from a couch, I'm using my legs and not using my hands or anything. So thank goodness I have some good leg muscles. But um, these are still super swollen on the side here. Um, they still kind of just look weird like especially naked leo is all tuckered out he played ball today for so long on like by the boat ramp but or the boat um the, what am i trying to say where everyone launches their boats and jet skis so that's what we're doing everybody's out on a ride right now and i'm gonna go grab myself a beer my face is doing pretty good it's still swollen and a little numb in here so I'm still wearing this thing um yeah and I've been wearing this around camp straight up so <laughs> I give no fucks honestly like if I could not wear it that'd be cool but I have to so whatever protecting my investment you know so the pain's not so bad like when I wake up in the morning it's like it's worse than like later in the day because I've gone like eight plus hours without any pain meds or anything so um this bra like doesn't fit like I just ugh. I also haven't pooped in like three and a half days, so I feel very bloated and constipated. I've been taking some of the meds that they told me to take to help me poop and um, some natural ones that I have too and nothing's really working right now. And I haven't even taken the crazy pain pills, like the narcotic pain pills I've stayed away from. I've just been taking Tylenol and Ibuprofen. Um, it's my little bag of tricks right here. <laughs> so, oh. That's kind of the checkup here. Um, oops, I'm pressing things on my phone. So, not really much to report. I really wish I could go out on the boat right now, but we'll be back out here in July, so that'll be fun. Um, I'm trying to get like 90 Day Fiance to play in here, but it's not having it. Like, salsa signal out here is so bad. So I'm gonna go, my arm is getting so tired. But um, yeah, that's my check-in for today, you guys. Oh my goodness. I got some sun today. So it is day four of having my breast aug. So I'm still having to wear this little ugly bra around. Not much is going on over here. Again, they're just sitting super, super high up here. And my nipples are like facing the floor basically. So it's still pretty not attractive, but I actually feel kind of gross because I've been out at the river here, taking it super easy obviously, not doing anything crazy, just relaxing and having beers, but it's, um. I just feel gross, like I've got like mosquito stuff on, I've got like sunscreen on, like I just really wanna take a shower. Not really supposed to get the stitches wet, which I have not here, obviously the river would probably give me an infection, but I just can't wait to take this bra off tomorrow when we get home and take a freaking shower. Oh, my favorite person. Hmm? I said, oh, it's my favorite person. Oh, hey. Hey guys, so it is the fifth day after surgery i didn't film anything yesterday because i was driving back from the river and we got back kind of late and i honestly just forgot to so today is a good day because i'm actually pooping again i pooped today all by myself if you've watched my instagram stories then you saw this i just want to take a moment to congratulate myself for taking the biggest shit ever i've been so constipated on all of the medicines and pills that I've been on because of all of this. And I just took a massive crap all by myself with no prunes, no supplements. Yes, yes. 
so as you can see we are pretty bruised here um it's kind of weird i'm like trying to make cleavage but they're just big and up here but they're not really giving me like nice cleavage so they look kind of odd there is definitely bruising and i have to say <laughs> i finally started to be able to go to the bathroom yesterday which is really nice um so that's great and i took some more prunes today but i have been so bloated like literally i could pass for like seven months pregnant right now because my tits are up to here and i'm just so my stomach is so like sticking out so much and um i googled it because i got a little concerned because it's not something that i heard about but i also didn't hear that my boobs were gonna look like weird bricks that were here and here and my nipples were gonna be kind of like low so uh I, I googled it and there was somebody that was talking about having their breast augmentation and they were talking about how they like um were like bloated as hell for like weeks and a couple doctors had responded and said yeah this is normal for post-surgery for you to be bloated for a few weeks so i'm just thinking like why don't they tell you this like i read through the entire booklet of like um information about you know what to expect the healing process etc so i was kind of annoyed that that wasn't in there because i feel like it should be because i'm walking around like it's kind of like hard to take a deep breath because i feel like i honestly have staples into like where my incision is under here i feel like i have staples like in there so it's kind of it, it feels uncomfortable to breathe deeply and so I kind of been like hunched over this way I feel like which is making me like not have the strength to suck in like I feel like you use your chest when you suck in a little bit so anyways but I was just like gosh why am I so freaking bloated I've just decided my body's just decided it was gonna like let me poop yesterday and today so that's been great um, I've had quite a few bowel movements today in case you were wondering and so and I haven't really been eating a bunch of salty foods or anything so I did drink a shitload of beer at the river but uh, yeah so I was just kind of like gosh I'm so bloated and so I googled and I'm glad I found that I don't have to wear my jaw bra today yesterday was the last day yesterday I was actually able to take my stitches out um, but Nick is at work today, so I'm going to sleep with the jaw bra on tonight again. And then tomorrow he's going to take them off. Um, let's see, you can kind of see what's going on here. There's just a few stitches. They look like little whiskers. This is still kind of numb a little bit and sore. It's kind of sore all here and here. And this is obviously healing. You can see that giant bruise. Um, but like overall it's like hard to see like I mean I guess there's fat missing I can't tell like a huge difference at the moment it might be because it's still a little bit swollen but um it's been fun reading your guys's dms too because I am reading stuff like oh like I just got my boobs done three days ago it's like nice to do the journey with you and stuff so hopefully this video is useful for those of you that are planning on getting a breast augmentation or maybe you're healing right now because I feel like even though I had an entire Fox fan base of you guys to tell me what to expect, there were some things that I just didn't know, like the bloated thing or like how ugly my boobs would look right now. So um, also like, I mean, I was expecting some gnarly bruising too, but like this area is actually kind of painful too because, and it's still a little bit numb as well because they did the liposuction in the armpits too. And because I've been wearing this bra and it's been hitting me right here, I haven't really been, I haven't really noticed a difference there either. Other than the fact that when I took a picture like this, there was like literally like no fat here, which was awesome. So yeah, I actually stopped taking all of those pills. Um, I stopped taking all of those pills. Um, yes. Yesterday I didn't take any pills. Today I haven't taken any pills. I was taking uh, a muscle relax or a muscle relaxer. Um, I was also taking Celebrix. Uh, I'll just tell you what I was taking. What it, like it's for. So I was taking um, an anti-inflammatory. I took an antibiotic so that I didn't get an infection for the per first couple like 48 hours I think. And then I was taking Tylenol or ibuprofen, switching off between the two. Taking like probably six a day like or like no two in the morning and two later in the day so I'm off of all of that stuff there's also stool softener that I was taking and I think 
that's it. And then I, of course, was given the narcotic um, pain pills, but I didn't want to take those, so I didn't. So I have some of those left and I'll just keep them for if there's a different time where I really need some pain medicine. But I just didn't want to feel nauseous. Like I had my, I had my um, post-op appointment the day after I got them done and taking the bra off, it almost made me like, no, it, not almost, it did make me like ill because I was just thinking about like, like the pain I was feeling. I was just thinking about like what I just did to my body and I was kind of overcome with like this nauseated feeling. And so, and just like not having the support of the bra, like you really feel the stitches. Like right now when I'm wearing it, yeah, I feel the stitches, but it feels like more like the bra digging into me. So when the bra was off, I was like, oh, that feeling is just like my stitches. And like I said, it feels like they've been, my skin's been stapled in here. So um, the doctor said it looks good and looks normal and how it should, so that's good. Uh, I was gonna actually film that, but I knew that it would take me a really long time to blur out my boobs and stuff, and I just feel bloated and gross, so I was like, eh, I won't film that. I have another appointment on June 4th. Um, uh, today's May 25th. I have an appointment on June 4th, and I think that they might be taking out the stitches underneath my boobs, so this whole process has been interesting. Like. I have absolutely no idea how big my boobs are gonna be. Like you don't, you just can't really, it's like a question mark because everyone's body is different. Everyone's breast cavity is a little bit different. So trying to like figure out like what cup size I'm gonna be right now is almost impossible. I've also heard so many different things um, from different people in the DMs. Like, so if it weren't for a couple of my friends who have told me about their experience getting fake boobs, I'd be a lot more nervous right now. I wish that they would tell you that. So I'm telling you that your boobs are gonna look weird AF after. You're not going to like the way that they look, I don't think. I don't, I mean, everyone is different, but I do not like the way that mine look right now. What else? Someone had told me that they thought that they went too small too because this bra that they have you in is like a compression bra and it's like smashing them down so that they heal where they need to heal. But it can take up to six months to a year for them to fully drop and fluff up, which fluff up is what people have been calling it, which I like. So I'm just kind of like ready to be able to like shop for cute clothes and like have them be kind of more the shape that they're gonna be. Cause like right now I'm not really impressed with how they look. They don't look very good. I'm like, like Franken titties, like so weird. Um, so I think that's just me over analyzing and overthinking, but I'm feeling pretty good without pain medicine. I mean, I just took the bra off to take a shower a little bit ago and yeah, it's painful. Like these stitches are definitely sore where they're at. Uh, but I'm sure in the next 10 days that I have before my next doctor's appointment, it'll, someone's cooking something outside. It'll be different. So, um, isn't this pillow cute? I got this for Nick. I don't think he likes it very much, but I thought it was really cute. Like he wasn't very excited when he opened this for Christmas, but I thought it was adorable. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at today. I'm just like bloated and I got some weird block titties and like if Minecraft had boobs in the game, that would be what mine look like. <laughs> I, think to, I think this will be my last check-in with you guys and then I'm gonna do another follow-up video with you guys once they've healed and they look kind of more like how they're gonna look. So um, right now I'm gonna do a little, I'm gonna post up a little Q&A online and let you guys ask some questions. So that's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna go ahead and answer some of the questions that you guys have about this boob job situation in general and then the next video i'll put up about this um i'm thinking will be kind of another update video that's like okay like post op post post op Alrighty, so now we're gonna go over some q a questions um do you wish you would have gone bigger i have absolutely no idea at this point because i don't know how large they are going to be um, did you do anything to your face? We all know that I did. <clears throat> Any wild dreams with the anesthetic? Um, nope. How is your nipple sensation? Are they just for show? 
So my nipples are actually extremely sensitive right now and I hope they go back to normal because it doesn't feel good. Like when I don't have a bra on and like something touches them, it's like so, so, so sensitive. I know that during um, breast augmentation surgery, you can actually lose sensation in your nipple sometimes, mostly when they go in right below the nipple, which is, wow, I just barely touched mine, it's so sensitive, which is one of the reasons why I did under the boob. Do you really have to replace implants every 10 years? No, you don't. It's a yes and no answer to this question because um, I did a lot of research on this myself just so I knew what to be prepared for financially and just in general, but it's individual to everyone and you may need to have them redone in 10 years and you may not. Um, Dr. Saltz told me she's had hers in for like 26 years and she's fine. So if you don't have any problems with them, they haven't ruptured or anything like that, then you don't need to have them replaced. Do you feel now that your boobs match your body type? I do feel that my boobs match my body type a bit more now. Um, I, my hips are bigger than they used to be when I was younger and I've always had kind of a bubble butt. So, and I'm tall, I'm 5'9", and when I wear heels, I'm like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, so I do feel a lot better having bigger boobs now. Like, right now they're pretty swollen and stuff, so I honestly don't know how big they're gonna be, but I think they're gonna be a good size. This is a really good question. Is there a list of questions that you believe is crucial to ask at your consultation? Um, I, I'll try and think of some maybe and leave them in the description box. Um, I think my main questions are, like obviously I went to a doctor that I really loved her work and so I wanted her opinion on what size she thought I should do for my body type and then took that into consideration when making my decision. I also wanted to hear her thoughts on the different types of implants because there are teardrop shaped implants, um, there are textured. She recommended textured for me because I work out like five days a week and with that they don't um, flip around as much and I didn't mention this in the intro but what I did was I actually did um, textured and um, I went under the submuscular and I did like the gummy bear kind. They don't really call it that. It's um, silicone. Saline ones I heard and they're just around ones in general can kind of flip around in the pocket and they cause rippling on the side a little bit, the saline ones. So that's why I went with what I had. So I'll try and think of some questions, but I think it's really individual to you specifically. And I think even watching a video like this helps you really kind of think about some of the things that you'll wanna ask just based on my experience. So I recommend watching a lot of videos and um, I think a lot of it is like asking their opinion and really loving and believing in their work and then you're gonna trust what they have to say for the most part. You know, you have to put your own opinions in there too and figure out what you wanna do. But if you trust your doctor and you love their work, um, I think it's really important to listen to what they have to say. Did you feel like after a week you could get around okay, if not when? So um, I'm at about a week right now and as I'm talking to you, my incisions are hurting but I opted to not, I stopped taking any ibuprofen or pain pills of any kind about three days ago, three or four days ago? No, probably like three days ago. So, um, and I've been getting around fine. Um, sitting in the car, going over bumps is not very pleasant. I would say the day after I tried to go on a little walk, that was not happening. Um, this bra sits right on the incision basically. So I have some like little pads underneath it. But um, I think that is also super different for everybody, like the healing process, because I got, people saying I was fine the next day, and then people saying I wasn't fine for like a month. So I think a lot of it is like the trauma that your body endures during the surgery, like how it goes for you and like how your doctor puts them in, if they where they go in to actually put the implants in. So I think a lot of that kind of depends on you, your surgeon, and just like, your pain tolerance and how your body heals in general. So I was, I would say I was up and about the third day, right? I like drove three hours to the river. I didn't drive, I sat in the passenger seat. But um, you know, it's still painful, but I wasn't gonna miss a river trip for a little bit of pain. So, you know, Nick was super impressed. I don't know if he's ever cared for anybody that has gotten a breast augmentation before, but he seemed to think that I was kind of a champ about it. So I don't know, maybe I just have a really high pain threshold. Um, but my body is doing really well and I've been taking like the vitamins and everything that I need um, before and after surgery so that I could heal as fast as possible. So I would recommend, um, that's actually a great consultation question. I would ask your doctor what vitamins and things that they recommend that you get in advance so that you can have 
a fast recovery um, because I did a lot of research on the internet, which I would suggest doing too, and I got a bunch of supplements and started taking them um, prior to my surgery to make sure that I was, my body was ready and able to heal quickly. Could you expand on the things you experienced that no one warned you about of before, before surgery? So, um, yeah, I wasn't aware that, um, I wasn't aware that my boobs were going to be like all the way up here, like pecs. So that was one thing like, yeah, I heard that they were going to be high and like, I was going to look like a porn star or something. Well, I don't look like a porn star. I look like a linebacker or something like they don't look super attractive. Like right now, like this up here needs to drop. So they look more natural. So I don't think I was prepared for how they were going to look after because I kind of just thought that they'd be more in place and kind of look more like sexy tits, like right off the bat. But for me, that's not been the case. Um, I did my post-op the day after and she thinks they look great and she thinks I'm gonna be very happy. So that's one thing I didn't expect. I kind of expected them to just kind of already like be, be able to like do cleavage and like wear a dress maybe a week after and like show some cleavage. It's not like that for me at all. Like they are not super cute right now. So it's gonna take some time. So that's one thing I didn't really know about. Um, what else? trying to think I didn't I wasn't prepared for my nipples to be extremely sensitive that's again kind of a me thing it could happen to you it may not um I also wasn't prepared for the fact that they're gonna feel super small because you're in this compression bra and I wasn't prepared for like I touch I remember touching my chest like after I got out of surgery and it didn't feel very big and then my dad saw me at the river and he's like you look the same and I'm like yeah it's kind of weird, huh? I wonder if I didn't go big enough. And so that was one thing I wasn't prepared for either. So I kind of wish that they had told me both of those things. And you know, they always say, oh, they're gonna be high, but like, yeah, like I thought they were gonna look like porn star tits, like all up high and like hot. But no, it's like pecs up here, your nipples kind of lower than usual and you're just kind of waiting for them to drop. So I would say those are the main things that I was not prepared for. Um, I've also been sleeping on a wedge pillow, which has kind of been not something that my doctor even suggested, but other people suggested it. So I've been doing that and that's been like pretty uncomfortable. So I would recommend getting some like natural um, sleeping vitamin type things to help you sleep. Um, last night I was like up at three and I was just like, oh my gosh, looking around like wide awake. So I took some sleeping. I have these little gummies. I'll link those for, the, for you in the description box below. Hopefully I remember. Um, but those helped me go right to sleep. Favorite thing to wear with your new boobs? I wish I knew. Oh, I also didn't know and I wasn't aware that I was gonna be literally bloated for like a few weeks. So one of my fellow Instagrammers messaged me. She's like, I was so bloated after surgery until I stopped taking my medicine. And so I kind of realized that I was going through the same thing and I wasn't told at all by my doctor that I was gonna be bloated. So. I wish that was something that they had told me too because I was trying to figure out, I'm like, why am I so bloated right now? So that was one thing I wasn't aware of. I didn't know that that was gonna happen either. And then when I Googled it, it was fine. But yeah, that's definitely something I didn't know about. Anything that you would do differently in prep for the surgery or for afterwards? Um, I think I probably would have asked for more of these compression bras. I only have two and in one night I stink it up with sweat. So, and Nick doesn't have a washer and dryer in his um, place. So that makes it a little difficult. So I probably would have grabbed a few more of those and I would have, I wish I would have prepared myself more with more button up shirts like this. I went literally like the day before surgery and went to Target um because i just put it off and like i c could hardly find anything there that was gonna work so those are kind of some of the things that i wish that i would have done a little bit differently but other than that i feel like i really did my research and i really listened and i listened to you guys you guys gave me so much good advice that i was pretty i was like fine i was fine so there's a lot of questions um about do, do you have uh did you have any cold feet on surgery day no i didn't <laughs> um so a lot of these questions are about like, are you happy? What do you like to wear? Like, I can't really answer those questions until these settle in, but I know I'm gonna be happy because I'm very, I'm a huge fan of Dr. Saltz's um, work, just in general. Like if you go to her website, like her before and after pictures are absolutely 
stunning. So I don't think that my case is going to be any different. I had a pretty good set of boobs to start with. So I think that they're gonna be fine. The one concern that I have had is that they feel kind of far apart. Like I can't make, like I can't make cleavage, like that kind of hurts. So maybe once they drop a little bit, they'll be like more, like less hard, you know? And like I can make a little bit more cleavage if I want to. So that's been one thing that I'm kind of like, mm, like should I just sit, like push them together a little bit? Like I don't know how they're healing, like why are they, you know? And that's kind of just, it kind of goes with how your boobs naturally are, I think. So that's something to consider. But a lot of the questions I'll be able to answer in my next video um, because I'm not really there yet. So I'll leave everything that I can in the description box for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions that I didn't cover in this video, can you leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get on there and respond to you guys. I've been watching 90 Day Fiance like a psychopath. So I'll probably just be sitting on there responding to your guys' questions and comments when this video goes live. So yeah, if I didn't answer anything, that you're like, if you have any burning questions that you really wanna know, um, drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you guys. But thank you so much for watching my boob journey, the uh, part one, I guess. We'll do part two when I'm a little more healed up and I'm gonna plan on doing some like, um, like haul videos for you guys with my new boobs, just kind of show like, look, I can fill my dresses out now. <laughs> so uh, yeah, super stoked for that and um, praying for my own good healing too. So thank you guys so much. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.